Hey there, friends. Uh, my name is Jonathan Page. I'm the director of Connectional Ministries for Innovation and Creativity, and it's a joy to welcome you to another Before Conference Conversations podcast. Uh, this is a, a podcast where we talk about the lead up to General Conference and uh, all of the work that's coming up for United Methodists as they get ready to gather April 23rd through May 3rd of 2024 in Charlotte, North Carolina uh, for the postponed 2020 United Methodist General Conference. And today we're going to talk about a legislative committee uh, called General Administration. And so it is my joy to welcome the Reverend Grace Hahn and Ms. Shirley Kaufman, uh, who are both delegates from the Virginia Annual Conference, who are serving on the General Admin Legislative commu uh, Committee, not community, although maybe you're forming community as, you, uh, as you're working on committee stuff. Grace, Shirley, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Course. So, um, Shirley, maybe we'll start with you. Uh, Shirley, you are a general conference veteran, correct? This is not, yes. not your first rodeo. Uh, how many general conferences have have you been to uh, as a delegate so far? I was first elected in 2004. Okay. So so doing a quick mm -hmm. bit of math, this will be your fifth general conference. Is that right? Uh, I guess. Right. Or, fifth or, or maybe sixth. six because of maybe the 2019. Fifth. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. So 2019, so, okay. So I'm curious, uh, what drew you to the work of General Conference? Uh, you're you're a layperson. Um, what what about this uh, kind of holy conferencing has you interested in in representing the Virginia Conference of the United Methodist Church? Well, Jonathan, I've always been called to work in uh, in the church, starting with local church, and then um, was nominated to do some district work, and then conference. And so in 2000 when I was nominated to be a delegate, never thinking I would be elected. Um, and when I was elected, I felt maybe this was a, still a part of my calling to work in the church, just on a different level. And so it's truly been a good experience to be a general conference delegate. Awesome. Thank you, Shirley. And and then Grace, you're you're kind of on the flip end of the script. Like me, you're a you're a first time delegate. Uh, this go around. So how about you? What um what what called you to the work of General Conference? Um, well, if I'm really honest, I think um it was our last general conference in 2019. You know, I wasn't really looking to get into general conference work. It can feel really like distant from the local church, and I kind of wanted to put my head down and do local church work. Uh, and, you know, I think watching General Conference 2019, it was um, just a really frustrating, demoralizing, difficult General Conference where it felt like the church, uh, it felt like the church was in crisis. You know, we passed this traditional plan that was, um, you know, did not include our, um, I think the fullness of our of God's community of our LGBTQ siblings. We also saw like deep factions in like the worldwide church, and both of those things were just really painful. And I think I felt a call. You know, instead of you can sit and complain about it and uh, and whine and moan about it, um, or um, you can do something about it. And as I started to kind of look into a little bit more of like how, how do we get to this place? What is happening with the church? Uh, that kind of pulled me a little bit more into this general conference work. Um, so um, trying to listen for God's call as 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 um, baptized believers, I think that's kind of what led me into this work as a general conference delegate. It's beautiful. Yeah. And that that idea of even um, even in spaces of grief or spaces where we are not encouraged by the outcome that doesn't inhibit the space of the Holy Spirit to um, to be calling and to be directing and saying, hey, there there can still be, uh, I, I'm reminded of, I think it's what the first Corinthians 12 31 that says, pursue the greater gifts and I'll show you still a more excellent way, right? And that that kind of concept is what, what I hear reflected in that story of just- Yeah, I mean, I often think one of the greatest privileges I have as a clergy person is that we get to be present in these kind mm -hmm. of sacred milestones in people's lives. Sometimes those are really places of great joy. Sometimes they're places of great grief. But in those moments, we're kind of called to respond. And that's what it felt like. This was this difficult, but kind of sacred moment. And how do we respond? And how do we uh, be present in that moment? Absolutely. Absolutely. So 
So we've, uh, in previous podcasts, we've been through kind of how in Virginia we pick legislative committees. So it's a, it's, it goes by order. We, well, we, we do some work to talk about our gifts and how we're oriented uh, and, and kind of our own interest areas and that sort of thing. But then it goes in order of election. So, uh, so you all landed on the general administration uh, sub legislative committee. So um, does that, should we just infer from that, that you're both kind of generalists and you, you love everything and everyone, or uh, what, what is it about the work of general admin that kind of is like, yeah, that's a legislative committee I'd want to work on? Uh, for me, um, at the 2012 general conference, um, my legislative committee finished early. And mm -hmm. so we were allowed to just go sit in on another legislative committee as they did their work. So I sat in on general administration. And at that time, they had some really interesting petitions. And so I thought, okay, maybe next time, I'll do general administration. So I did that. Um, I think the legislation at that point was was a little different than it is now. Yeah. Um, this time, one interesting thing about general administration is it's the legislative committee that receives the report of the uh, connectional table. Mm. And I thought um, that was interesting to read their report and know what they're doing and see some of the petitions that pertain to them. Um, otherwise, this time, our petitions are sort of all over the place and some not so relevant anymore. So it, it's been interesting to work through uh, these petitions and, and see what's actually there. Thanks for sharing that, Shirley. I'm curious when you say uh, some of it's not as relevant anymore, is that due to the delay in general conferences it's sort of so. the world around us. Yeah, for instance, we have nine petitions dealing with plain grace, which oh, is, right. you know, kind of not so relevant anymore. Right, that was a plan that had kind of been formulated as, right. as one of the options in 2020 and since uh, kind of fallen by the wayside. Yeah, yeah, well, thank you for that. How about you, Grace? Uh, general administration, what, what's drawn you to it? So I think for me, I wanted to be on a, committee that I wanted to kind of understand how the big church ran, essentially, you know, so I think often, uh, you know, they, as they said, the devil is in the details. So I, I wanted to have a better understanding, especially as a first time delegate of how the general church is structured, how it's ordered. And I felt like that would be a really good entryway into understanding if there's going to be changes, or if there's going to be um, big legislation that passes, understanding how it kind of functions. I actually think I initially wanted to sign up for financial administration, but I think Bishop Berlin yeah. was ahead of me and he took it. So then I <laughs> I was pushed down the line, which was fine. I was happy to do. But that's so how it, I it, and then it was mind. ironic because he's no longer on our delegation right. because he's now a bishop. And uh and so that spot opened up and yet here we are here. And we just we, we all kind of suspected that then, you know. Yeah. I was like, you should leave that open. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Well, hey, maybe maybe this is the first of many uh, times to general conference, and there'll be an opportunity in the future or something like that. So, um, so so I'm assuming uh, that y'all, this uh, folks will be hearing this podcast uh, within a month of the start of general conference. So hopefully, by the time people have heard it, uh, you all will have started your preparation. Although I'm guessing, as we're recording today, you've you've certainly started your preparation uh, mm -hmm. with the legislation. Uh, have you sensed? Um, Grace, maybe I'll start with you on this one. Is the legislation breaking down to any particular sort of thematic areas or are there kind of buckets where you feel like uh, the, the legislation's coming in general admin? Yeah, so I mean, like Shirley was kind of alluding to, general administration ends up being a little bit of a catch-all <laughs> committee that really ranges pretty widely on what is included. But there have been, I think, you know, three or four kind of main buckets of legislation that we've seen. Um, the first has to do with kind of general inclusion. So a number of different legislation about um, how we name, include, don't name um, um, membership, how we think about, um, so that, that's kind of one bucket of legislation. Another bucket has to do with general agencies, uh, which ranges from how, who should sit on connectional table. So connectional table is that kind of main body that implements the 
vision and mission of the church that helps prioritize the mission of the church coming out of general conference, who should sit on connectional table. Um, the current membership of, of uh, connectional table is very US centric as the, as the you know, denomination has become more worldwide, how we make sure that membership is equitable. And then there's also some conversation in general agencies about um, you know, how do general agencies interact with churches that may have disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church? What's the relationship look like? So there's some kind of general agency questions. Uh, then there's some general ones about like, um, like creeds and restrictive rules that uh, I think are a little bit more tangential, I think for this general conference. And then some other ones around kind of sustainable investments that are also a part of it as well. So pretty wide ranging, I think, as you can see. Uh, Shirley, I don't know if I missed any of this. Yes, yeah. Really, really broad. Uh, Shirley, is there any, is that kind of been your observation in the study as well? Kind of those, those are the yes. buckets. Yes. And, and so I'm curious, you talk about creeds. I want to make sure that folks that are listening, that that, that perks my ears up a little bit, because um, I, I can actually remember in my study too, reading about this, because a lot of times, one of the one of the things that kind of leading up to General Conference, uh, some people outside the United Methodist Church have asserted, like, well, be careful, the United Methodist Church might change its, uh, you know, its doctrinal standards or something like that, um, which I, I think we can all say, hey, that is that is not true. We're not looking to, to change anything about the doctrinal standards or theological task. Um, the, the creedal piece is interesting though, because it's, um, it's kind of a unique purpose. Is, is that something, Grace, are you able to tell us a little bit more about kind of what the shape of that legislation is? Yeah. I mean, I think what's interesting about legislation is you kind of get the run of the gamut. <laughs> yeah. So you get some really substantive legislative proposals that I know we're going to spend a lot of time on. And then we get some legislative, um, um, work that I think feels a little tangential that I, I think what may not be as prioritized. So we have a few legislation regarding kind of creeds and including certain creeds, some of the restrictive rules. Um, I think one of, you know, Shirley and I are both on a, a team that's been meeting and um, we will admit that like, that's not a huge priority for us. We yeah. think our creeds are really good. We think our restrictive right. rules are really good and that we feel pretty affirmed that this is how we want to move forward as a church. Those are not the issues of the United Methodist Church. You know, the issues that I think we want to spend a little more time prioritizing is how can we be an inclusive church? How can we be a worldwide church? How can we make sure that we are equitable across, um, across our church? And that has been primarily where we have been focused on uh, in our work. Yeah, that's helpful. And, and a real reminder of our polity, right, that that people are able to submit petitions to general conference from a wide variety of perspectives and spaces. And that doesn't, um, it it does not then require a legislative committee to take that on as, you know, like legislative committees have the ability to organize themselves on how they handle legislation and what they're going to prioritize. And, and if something doesn't feel Wesleyan or, or doesn't add to, to what we're doing, there's a, um, in our delegation recently, there was a conversation uh, that I believe came out of at the, an annual conference somewhere in the Midwest. It might have been Iowa. One of you all might remember about sort of like uh, thinking about principles of, okay. of petitions that come before the um, general conference. And like, it's it's kind of like the, I remember growing up in the church uh, during children's church when we, once we had that like think, my, like, is it is it true? Is it helpful? Yeah. Is it, you know, all those sorts. And it's kind of yeah. the same thing, but for legislation. So yeah, um, I think yeah. it was from Minnesota. And I actually think there you go. it was such a good guy that it was like, is this legislative solving a problem right. or is it adding a layer of bureaucracy? Mm -hmm. That's a great question to ask in the church, <laughs> right? There's lots of really good ideas. The question is, is this an idea that needs to be implemented at this time? What is the specific problem that we have and how can we resolve that issue? And I think that's been a good guiding principle for us as well. And, and to your point is, is legislating it the solution that actually moves it forward or, or just, yeah, that's, um, I think that's really helpful. So, so Shirley, uh, we've in, in these podcast conversations, we've identified that kind of the three uh, almost priorities of this general conference in a lot of ways are regionalization, the removal of harmful language, and the revision of the social principles. Um, do you see any of those three uh, priorities emerging in the work of general administration? We have um, 
a couple uh, petitions dealing with uh, inclusion. Okay. Um, one one that I will just mention is uh, establishing a special Sunday for LGBTQI um, information, and it would be an offering Sunday, and it would raise the number of Sundays to seven from mm -hmm. six, and it would be under the supervision of the General Board of Church and Society. Um, otherwise, um, we, we have a, a little bit of regionalization. Um, um, nothing that just really pops out. Okay. And I think one thing we need to remember as we go to general conference is that not all legislation will be dealt with. Some of it may not even make it out of committee. Right. Uh, much of it will be on a consent agenda. The general conference plenary will not deal with much of this legislation. So that's a wise perspective to offer. Yeah, and Grace, I think you might be wanting to jump in there too. Yeah, I think like Shirley said, um, we have a number of legislation that kind of contributes towards those, although they might not be the primary um, legislation to to um, to see those legislation through. So like regionalization is a good example. I think the legislation to rethink the membership of the connectional table really plays into uh, and really, uh, you know, interacts with the idea of regionalization, that we need to restructure the way our church, um, we need to restructure our church, we need to make sure that's equitable across the globe, and connectional table needs to reflect that membership as well. So it doesn't have to do specifically with regionalization, but it certainly is a part of the same kind of initiative and impulse. That's great. Yeah, that's. I think that's really, really helpful. And and I know earlier you all mentioned that, that there's kind of a group that you get together with uh, to talk about some of this. And so we know from uh, some of our some of our conversations with other delegates that there are many uh, many legislative committees have a small group of folks that are kind of coming together to talk through process to sort of do some discerning work together. Is that has that been a part of you all's rhythm with uh, the general administration legislative committee? Yes, we've met the first Thursday of the month since January, and we have another one on the first week in April, and then some unscheduled ones yet between then and the time we leave for general conference. And and so, Shirley, you, you say that what's kind of the character of those conversations is largely focused on legislation? Is it building community, um, kind of thinking about officers, things like that? What, how how's that work been unfolding? We, we started out building community. And we've worked our way up to the last meeting. We were actually dealing with legislation. And I think that will be the focus, the other ones. Um, we haven't talked too much about officers yet. I think that will be coming up in one of our future meetings as well. Sure. That's great. Um, any other kind of, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, Shirley, you've you've done this. Uh, you know what it's like to prepare for general conference. Grace, this is this is kind of a newer work for, for you as a first-time delegate. What is that rhythm like in trying to kind of figure out, uh, obviously, general conference is not the only thing happening in life. Um, you know, how, how have you figured out sort of your rhythm of preparation for, for this event? I try to take um, a day at a time and just do nothing but concentrate on reading legislation. Um, I actually had uh, Jane Wilson read one of my books for me and make notes, which was wonderful because now I can just read through her notes and, and get an idea of what the legislation is about. Um, still have two other books I have to deal with, but that was a tremendous help to have her read that. And Karen McElfish and I started in October last fall, meeting once a month. And we've done that since then with the exception of December and talked about general conference because it's also her first time so we've sure. talked about general conference, sort of how to prepare, um, all of those kinds of things leading up to getting ready to go. And major shout out to Jane for that work uh, and, and doing that. She's Jane's one of our awesome alternate uh, folks. And yes. that's, that's one of the ways that the delegation has been able to, to work together on that. That's great. How about you, Grace? One of the benefits of that was that I got to spend some time with Jane over yeah. coffee as we talked through her notes and what she had done. That's beautiful. I love that. Uh, Grace, how about you? 
Yeah, I mean, it has been um, enormously helpful that our um, delegation has been um, so willing to share <laughs> with each other. Uh, you know, like um, th this is, we're doing this work on top of our um, other work that we have, right? Like not in place of, on top of. Uh, so it's, ex it's extra work. Um, I have found it incredibly supportive and helpful that we as a delegation have been so cooperative and working with each other. So we've kind of taken turns like presenting, hey, here's what's kind of what, what to expect from general administration. We've shared that with each other. We've made our notes available to each other. That has been so helpful because there's a lot of legislation to read and there is not enough time to read it and not enough brain space to kind of process everything. But I feel much better knowing that when I go in, I know I could be like, hey, Shirley, what do you think about this? Or, hey, Jonathan, what do you think about this? And we can kind of rely on each other's um, knowledge and research. That's been so, so helpful for me, especially as a first time delegate to be able to be like, I don't have to have all of the answers by myself, but together as a delegation, we can go in feeling fairly confident, you know, three weeks after Easter, <laughs> that we can do this work together. So that, that's been, honestly, I have really heavily relied on that, I think. Super helpful, yeah. Yeah, the timing's super fun, isn't it? The <laughs> nothing else is going on that time of year. Nothing but else, yeah. The truth is, nothing's ever going on, right? <laughs> There's never going to be a perfect time to schedule, and so, so April awaits us, and uh, late April, early May awaits us, and uh, and that'll be looking something we look forward to in in a lot of ways. And and so as we're kind of wrapping up this time together, you know, the the last day of general conference is May third. So at some point on May third, you know, the lights will go out in the convention center. It'll be time to go home. Uh, maybe Grace, we'll start with you, and then Shirley, if if you take it after Grace. Um, what's the story that you hope that we're telling as we're headed home? Just as general conference wraps up, as you kind of imagine what that space is like, what what story are you hoping that we'll be telling as we as we return back from Charlotte? That's a great question, uh, Jonathan. Um, I my hope is that last day of general conference, we can say, hey, we just laid the foundation for the new chapter of the United Methodist Church. That's what I hope. You know, it's, I think it's felt a lot in any number of ways, like we're use a lot, there's a lot of biblical metaphors, valley of dry bones, <laughs> you know, uh, wandering in the choice. desert. I mean, take your, <laughs> take your choice. And that come May 3rd, it feels like there's a lot of work ahead of us, but we are taking that next faithful step in this new chapter of the United Methodist Church. That's my hope of how we can leave General Conference. Awesome. Thank you. Truly, how about you? Jonathan, for me, I think this is one of the most important general conferences I will have ever attended. And so I hope that as we leave Charlotte, we can truthfully and honestly say that we have accepted each other. We are an inclusive church and we treated each other with kindness and that we go forth in love to celebrate the beginning of our denomination as we rebuild from all that's gone on before us. Beautiful. Those are those are two pretty good stories, y'all. And uh, I would I would be honored if if that's what it looks like, and and I'll be hopeful alongside you for for things to look that way as well. Well, hey, is there uh, anything you you know y'all have been so generous with your time today? Uh, any any kind of closing thoughts or remarks that you'd want to share as we head out into into whatever today will be. Thank, uh, thank you, Jonathan. Oh, and the leadership of the conference for, um, you know, letting us take some time to show our work and to invite our entire conference into this as well. Because this isn't just, you know, the 22 delegates, but it's our entire conference. So I just want to thank you for that. Sure. Yes, and I echo my thanks as well. And I hope that congregations will pray for us all the delegates, not just Virginia, but all the delegates, as we do this work that is so important for the future of our denomination. Amen. Yeah, the the prayer piece is huge. Uh, we're um, we'll we'll have an ongoing prayer initiative during general conference, and that's just um, 
that, that's such a fundamental part of all of this is that that it's work that people do, but it's guided by the Holy Spirit, or it needs, I should say, if it's to be fruitful, it should be guided by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that that comes through the ways that we uphold each other in prayer and encouragement and being there for one another. So uh, thank you all for showing up today uh, and for showing up to this conversation and to the work of General Conference. On behalf of the Virginia Annual Conference, thank you for for being a delegate and for representing us well. And we're, we're excited to hear about the outcomes of, of what's going to take place in Charlotte. So uh, that's going to that's gonna wrap us for today, friends. I want to thank you who have taken the time to tune in and uh, listen, whether you're uh, on a podcast platform, if you're watching on YouTube or on social media, wherever you are. Uh, thanks so much for being a part of this Before Conference conversation. Uh, as always, if you want to catch up on past episodes, if you want to see some of our thematic vid videos, our infographics, anything related to General Conference, you can find all of that at the uh, Virginia Conference website at baumc.org slash gc2024. Uh, we'll be back real soon with another edition of Before Conference Conversations. But until then, enjoy the day, be well, and we'll see you real soon. All right, let's hit stop.